guys, it's Coach Brianna here from Gleason's Gymnastics. Welcome back to my living room. I'm excited to be coaching your uh, week seven quarantine class, right? So our seventh virtual class, it's been a long time. Really missing you guys. I'm hoping your families are healthy. I'm hoping you're healthy. I hope you're getting along with your siblings. And I really can't wait to see all of you again soon. So the first thing we're gonna do today is just running in place. Remember, we wanna keep our elbows tucked in by our ribs. We're gonna go cheek to cheek with our arms and well, our hands more like. And then we're gonna move on to high knees and butt kicks. We're gonna do 10 counts of each. All right, ready guys? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice work, guys. Give you a little breather here, but I want us to be ready to go right into our high knee runs. This one's a little bit harder. Get your knees up to your belly button. All right, ready? And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, I'll give you a couple of seconds right in there because we would usually have a couple of seconds at the end of lines. Just wanted to say that I'm really missing seeing you guys around the gym, even if I don't coach you. Also, I really can't wait to come back and see you all soon. All right, now let's move on to kicking our butts. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. Nice work, guys. All right, the next thing we're gonna do, we need a couch cushion for. So I'm gonna come right over here. I'm gonna grab my cushion right off of the couch. Hope it's not too dirty. All right, we're gonna do 10 couch cushion squats. So we're gonna throw our couch cushion all the way up at the end of it, okay? It's gonna look like this. You're gonna go all the way down, up, toss, and catch, all right? Don't throw it through the ceiling, and if you've got low ceilings, maybe don't do this. All right, ready? And one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. All right, good job. Go ahead and put your couch cushion back for me. I don't need you to mount trip over them. So I turned my mat just so you guys can get a better view of the kicks from the side. But before I start doing kicks, I want you guys to remember that we never bend our knees, right? So you want to make sure your bottom leg and your top leg are going up nice and high, as high as you can get them. So if it's only this high, that's fine. Because if I kick this high and it bends, that's not a pretty kick, right? So let's start over here. We're gonna go forward first. So five if you can. One, two, three, four, and five. All right, on my way back, I'm gonna do five arabesque kicks, so behind me. So one, two, three, four, and five. All right. The last one we're going to do is a little bit harder, so don't get discouraged. But we're going to do sideways kicks, and we don't want to look like this. We want to keep our body nice and straight. So we're going to try one, two, kicking behind our elbow, three, four, and five. Those probably weren't my prettiest, but you guys get the idea. All right, I'm going to turn the mat one more time, and then we're going to do our static stretching, which is where we don't move around a whole lot. So yeah, we'll be doing candlesticks to a pike, candlesticks to a straddle, but that's not really moving in cardio like the running just was, all right? So since I am using this warm-up part for both the advanced and the girls' class videos, you guys can follow along. If I add anything in that seems a little hard, you can leave it out if it's not something we normally do in class. If you want to challenge yourself, I would love to see you try it, all right? Advanced class, I welcome you to do everything in this warm-up because it's what we would normally do. All right, let's give it a shot, guys. So the first thing we're going to do is our candlestick to a pike five times, and then we're going to reach for 10 seconds. So remember, candlestick, pike. Feet go all the way up to the ceiling. Two, I'm running into my couch over here. Three. Four, and last one, we're gonna just reach. And 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. Then we're gonna do our candlestick to a straddle. So we're gonna land and we're gonna reach all the way out, but we don't wanna straddle at the top. We wanna still have that nice straight candlestick, 
and then just pancake out. Remember, we reach on the last one, the fifth one. Ready? One, two, three, four, and last one, and reach for ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, I hope that wasn't too much, guys. Now we're going to do our stretching, reaching from one side to the other. So we're going to sit in our straddle, and we're going to reach to one side. Four, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. And then we're going to reach to the other side. One hand on each side of your foot. Four, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, this one's going to be like a pancake, but we're going to hold on to our ankles. So we're going to try to get our chest all the way down over the ground. Ready? Four, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, nice job, guys. Now we're going to do our butterfly, where we want to try to push our knees down as best as we can all the way down to the ground. We can use our elbows, we can use our hands, we can use our mind. But we're going to try that for 10 seconds. So push down as much as you can. Four, ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You know, I swear when I was your guys' age, I was able to get my knees all the way down. And now look at me. 27 and my hips won't do it. All right. So now we're going to do our wrists. We want to get right onto our hands and our knees. And we're just going to rock forward and backward, whichever way our fingers point is the way that we want to rock so we don't hurt our wrists, all right? This is good to help with our handstands, our cartwheels. You know how everyone complains about their wrists turning on bars? you got to stretch them out really nice at the beginning. So if you ever feel like your wrists aren't stretched enough, go ahead and stretch them more. And that's another thing. You guys can always pause these videos if there's a drill or there's a skill that you just like doing, so you want to do 25 more roundoffs, awesome. Pause the video, do them, and then start it back up. So don't feel like you have to go the whole time watching, okay? You can follow along with me, or you can do it at your own pace. All right, so we're gonna, in case you didn't notice, my hands are flipped over now. Don't push down too hard because you don't want your wrists to hurt, all right? So now we're gonna take our thumbs. We're going to squeeze them in our hands. We're going to try to keep our elbows as straight as we can and we're going to roll this out. So this is stretching our wrists all the way up into our forearms if you feel it all the way in here. But if we bend and we have noodle arms, that's not helping. So big long arm stretch right here. This one's a really good one. All right, then we're going to do our shoulders. So we want to reach all the way across our chest. We want to latch our elbow and pull it back towards our shoulder. Now notice my elbow isn't bent over here. It's nice and straight. We're going to do that for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And we're going to switch sides. So you should really feel it all the way over in this arm. So if you're not feeling it, then you probably don't have a nice straight arm. So really stretch it. All right, we're going to move on to patting yourself on the back because you guys are doing an awesome job this quarantine but also because it stretches our shoulders. So grab your elbow and push down. And we're gonna do that for about 10 seconds, even if I talk through the 10 seconds, just know it's always about 10. And then go ahead and switch sides. So remember, we pat ourselves on the back, we grab our elbow and we push it down. You should feel this one over here. All right, and shake it out. Nice work, guys. Now we're gonna move on to everyone's favorite, the split. So I'm gonna face this way. And I want you guys to notice that my knee is never gonna come out past my toes. So when I say take a big giant step forward, I take a big old giant step forward. And we wanna try to keep our back leg nice and straight back here, so not off to the side. So remember how we stretch on lines usually? That's what you wanna kind of aim for, even at home. All right, so we're gonna put our hands on our hips and we're gonna push our knee down. See, I even just moved my foot forward. It's a little adjustment you have to make sometimes when you're stretching. So you want it to stretch all the way down here in your leg. If you're not feeling that, you're probably sitting up a little too much. You want to 
push that hip right down to the ground. All right, and then we're gonna do our straight leg reach. So notice that my front foot is not gonna move. My back foot is not gonna move. I'm just gonna shift my weight backwards to my back knee. So all the way back, reach all the way up. Bend over, reach as far as you can. I have long arms, I can reach in front of my leg, but reach as far as you can without letting your knees bend. Okay guys, now we're gonna take both of our hands and put them on the same side as our bent knee. That's why I put that knee facing you. So you're gonna put your hands on that same side, so the opposite side of that front leg. So same side as your big toe. I just gave you three different ways to remember it, so I don't want anyone to forget. Both hands on the inside. Your knee's gonna come all the way up by your shoulder. It's not gonna go out to the side. You're gonna pull it right in, and you wanna try to get this back leg nice and straight. So you're pushing that hip all the way down, almost like you're actually doing a split already. And go ahead and slide out to that split so one hand goes on each side. And you want to sit up nice and tall. Remember that opposition that we talked about last time? You want to make sure that you have the opposite hands facing the opposite direction, setting up beautifully. Point that front toe for me if it's not already pointed. All right, about five more seconds of this, guys. And go ahead and switch sides, so up on your knees. And put the other foot forward. So I'm gonna turn for this so that you can see that one bent knee in the back so it helps with your deep lunge. But we're gonna keep our hands right on our hips just like last time and push our back hip down. And the other thing, guys, I just adjusted my toe and made me think about it. You don't wanna turn your big toe in. Just like on beam, you don't wanna toe in. You wanna make sure it turns out just a little. So don't turn it all the way out to the side because that's not good for your knee either. And now straight leg reach, so all the weight goes onto the back leg. One hand on each side, and try to sniff your shin. Actually, I think most people's noses go to their knee, but either way, just make sure that front knee is nice and straight. And now, both hands on the same side as that back knee. You're gonna put it right up by that front foot and bend your knee, keep it right up by your shoulder, and push that bottom hip all the way down as far as you comfortably can. The more you stretch it down, the less it hurts when you're doing it. Also, splits hurt a lot less if you guys get it all the way down, trust me. And one hand on each side, and slide right up to that one. Remember our up position hand, so this is my left leg split, so I want my right hand in the front. So remember, we don't want our back knee showing. You don't want to be in a lazy split. You want to make sure it's rolled right under in the back and you're sitting up beautifully like a ballerina or a gymnast or whatever. And come on up. All right, now this is the one you guys are going to all be mad at me over, I know. And I hate it too, especially as a grown up. So let's all try it together. We're going to do our center split. So we're going to start with our knees pointing up. We're going to try to slide down to our elbows. Remember, we don't want to make the letter Y with our body, so we want to make sure we're in a nice straight line. Oh, you guys ready for this? You can't laugh at me. And let's see. I promise that's the mat. All right. This isn't too bad. I don't know. It's not that comfy. I don't feel bad for making you guys do it, though. And about five more seconds. And come on out, shake out those legs. Okay, I hope you guys are ready to do some bridges. So advanced class, this is where we would also do some bridge rocks, so feel free to put those in. Girls class bridge rocks are always great. They help you with your kickovers and they help with your chest flexibility. So if you wanna try it, go ahead. But if it hurts, don't force yourself. Also parents, if your little one doesn't quite have the upper body strength to push all the way up to a bridge, not a big deal. They can always do a table, which is this. It's a modified version where you lift your belly button all the way up, but you're not actually laying on your back. If you want to spot them, help them with it. Just lift right near to their back and make sure that they're not on their head. All right, guys, I'm gonna push up to this bridge. You can't laugh at me. And you want to try to get those legs nice and straight. Put your chest over your hands. And we'll go for five, four, three, two, one. Come on down. Grab your knee and grab your finger roll. So for the
the girls' class watching this, you can do one more bridge for the advanced class. I want you to do five bridge rocks, all right? So I will show the bridge rocks, but remember, if they're tough, feel free to just do a regular bridge, one more. All right, so lay on your back, so push up. And so for the bridge rocks, guys, you want to rock to straight legs. So they're back, now they're straight. Two, three, four, and five. And then come on down, grab your knees, rock and roll. All right, guys, that is going to conclude our warm up. I'm going to get all set up and then I'm going to break off into making different class segments. Hey girls class, just us again. I am all set up over here for our fitness this week. So I was trying to find things that we could do around the house. And then I realized that I can't very well film out on the stairs while I'm holding my camera, I'm gonna look crazy. So I made my own stairs today out of some books. But if you guys have a step in your house, if you have a stool, something stable, so not something that you're gonna topple off of and crack your head open, so when I say use your stairs, use your steps, you can pause the video and then you can go and you can use whatever you have for it. So for me, I studied history. I have a lot of big old thick books that I can stand on and I don't feel that bad about. So I have a stool over here to help me with that for when I'm actually doing these though. So always make sure whatever you're doing is safe and appropriate for your situation in your house. So if you've got a tiny living room, maybe don't do big flips. You know, makes sense. We've got a low ceiling. Maybe that couch cushion exercise we did was a little too much. All right, so the very first thing that we're going to do is up and overs. It's a leg tightening exercise. So I have two rolls of toilet paper, and I'm assuming you guys probably do too. But if you don't, that's not a big problem at all. Just grab two small objects. You could grab two books. You could grab, let's see, video game controllers. I got two of these right over here. So anything that you can grab, I just want you to sit in a straddle and put them right over here. So we're going to be bringing our legs up and over. So we don't want to have spider legs when we do this. We want to have them nice and tight, and we're going to do that 10 times. So ready? We're going to try to keep our hands nice and flat if we can. Don't pick on me if I cheat, but ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ooh, that's gonna have my legs a little sore tomorrow. All right, next thing we're gonna do is passing the toilet paper from your hands to your feet. So you can't laugh at me if I drop it because when I tried this earlier, I dropped it a bunch of times. But it's almost like a V up or more like a tuck up because I'm not gonna make you V up. So we're gonna just bend our knees like a spaghetti and meatball, sorry. And then you're gonna pass it from your hands to your feet. So you're gonna go all the way out. And here's one. Pass it back. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Let's drop. Seven. Eight. Nine and ten. All right, I realize my counting was a little crazy, but you guys get the idea, okay? So you're really trying to engage your core and you're trying to pass it back and forth, and I'm kind of happy that I didn't actually drop it. All right, now we're going to move on to our calf raises. So I'm going to move these over. And so when I say calf raises, I mean these are your calves, and you want them nice and strong so you get good at balance beam, you get good at tumbling. You get good at jumping. You want to flip them nice and high. Strong legs. So I'm going to grab my stairs. If you guys have stairs and a railing, that's maybe a little more ideal as long as it's supervised and safe. All right. So we want to go all the way up as high as we can and down, but we don't want to go so fast. All right. So we're going to do 10 of these. So I'm holding on to something to help me over here. Which wants me a little bit higher. And then we're going to keep our other hand on our hip. And we're going to go one, two, that didn't work well, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 
ten. All right, now we're gonna do toe raises. So we don't want to stick our butt out and look crazy. Over here. We want to sit up nice and tall, and that's where this is gonna come in. But don't use it as a crutch. So we're gonna go. Oh, get your toes up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And 10. All right, nice job, guys. I'm going to move this over. And I'm going to actually move this over just a little bit because I need an anchor for my next exercise. So my anchor is going to be my couch. You guys need to pause the video and go use a bed or go use literally anything that will keep you from lifting your feet up. So mom, dad, brother, sister, anyone, grandma, grandpa, someone that can hold your feet down. We're just going to do 10 sit-ups, all right? But I'm going to make it a little bit harder because we're going to do a twist with toilet paper. So we're going to tap it on one side, tap it on the other, and then sit up. So let's see if I can do this. All right, so we're going to start it over here. We're going to go back, tap, tap, and it's going to go back to the same side. There's one, two, all the way up, three, up, four, up, five, up, notice I'm not laying down, six, up, seven, up, eight, up, nine, up, and last one, ten, up. All right, nice job, guys. So, Next thing I have for us to do is a challenge. So you're probably not going to like my challenge that much. But I have another book, a dictionary over here. You're trying to hold a pike press. So that's where you're going to sit like this. And if you can't do this, guys, it's a challenge. It's not supposed to be easy. So it's okay, but try it. It'll make you stronger the more you do it. So we're going to try to do a five-second pike press. So we're going to keep our hands on something that's going to let us sit up a little bit taller. I'd like them to be a little more even in size. So maybe if I small book, big book, that's close enough for me. All right, we're going to lift our butts up and we're going to hold them up as high as we can. We're going to try to keep our feet off the ground too. So it's really going to use our legs and it's really going to use our belly. But we're going to keep those knees nice and straight. All right, ready? Three, two, one, and five. Four, three, two, one. See me shaking? Oh, I need to get back to the gym too, guys. All right. So I am going to loop back through the video, and we're going to do that one more time each, but my own self is not, so enjoy hearing me say it one more time, and then I'm going to be all set up for our next event. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And here's one. Pass it back. Two, three, four. Five, six, just drop, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Two, that didn't work well. Three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Tap. Tap it and it's going to go back to the same side. There's one, two, all the way up, three, 
up, four, up, five, up, notice I'm not laying down, six, up, seven, up, eight, up, nine, up, and last one, ten. Welcome to floor. So I have my mat over here diagonally, but I'm going to be moving it around throughout this. So one thing that I want to show you guys is my wedge. We're going to be doing backwards rolls. So if you're not quite there with the backwards roll, I don't suggest hurting yourself in the house. So if you happen to have a wedge, awesome. Go ahead and grab it if you need it. If you don't have a wedge, it's not a big problem. You can always have mom or dad or a big sibling spot you. So when you're doing the backwards roll, they'll just simply lift your hips up. But if that's not an option, if you have a toddler bed, like a little sibling's bed that can come right off and say a couch cushion, you can prop it just right and safely do backwards rolls down it. And if it's really not quite safe enough for you yet and you're not pushing enough, that's when you also want a parent to come in. So. If we get to something that you can't do, leave it right out, guys. Don't feel pressured. So the first thing we're going to do, I just walked in so I can read better. We're going to be doing forward rolls. So we're reviewing all of the skills that are going to be in our girls' class routine. Because normally in June, we would have an exhibition where we would show off all of our routines to our families. But it's looking like that might not be a thing. But I want us to act like it is anyway. Because that's what we would do. Even if we came back and we did an exhibition the next day, you guys would be ready. So remember, forward rolls, we reach all the way up, we bend over, we touch the ground, we tuck our chin into our chest, and then we want to stand up using both feet and no hands. So all the way down, squat down, tuck your chin in, and stand up. All right, remember, we crown finish. Now, for floor, I want you guys to pause the video and try a couple more after I do it so I'm not just getting busy and making my neighbors crazy, okay? So I'm going to do just one more. I'm going to do about two of each scale, but you guys feel free to do more. Reach all the way up. Remember, we don't want to fall flat on our face, so we bend our knees, we squat down, we put our hands down, tuck our chin, roll, and stand. Okay, nice job, guys. Let's move on to the backwards roll part of this. So for our routine, we have a backwards roll in it. So that's where I'm going to grab my wedge. This one's got some Velcro right here that's probably going to scratch me, but we'll live. Okay, so for a backwards roll, we don't want to just fall backwards, right? I always see kids that want to bend backwards like a back bend. That's how you land on your head and it's not comfy. So we want to sit all the way down and roll. And as soon as our back touches, we want to push our hands into the floor. So all the way back, push and stand. Remember, always reach up tall and finish after every skill, even if you fall. All right, one more time. You want to sit all the way down, hold your pizza, so an imaginary pizza over your head, keep your elbows in so you can see them the whole time, sit down, keep seeing those elbows, and stand up. If that's too easy, try to do it with straight legs, so a backwards pike roll. If it's too hard, try to do it with your legs apart, so a straddle roll, that's a little bit easier. Okie dokie, so you guys can pause that and try a couple more of those. So I know it's going to seem weird with that, but now I came back and we're going to go into our T drills. So the T drills are the first part of our handstand. So we don't just go and end up walking on our hands, right? We want to start in our nice lunge. So remember you step forward with your good foot, you bend your knee, back leg is straight, arms are up by your ears. I'll threaten to give you a wet willy in person if I see your ears through the computer. I'm just kidding. All right. So reach up. And we're going to just go to the middle and make the letter T. So you want to go like this and back. All right, try that two more times with me. So we're going to go like this and back. And one more. T and lunge. All right, I'm wobbling all over the place right now because this is a strange man over here. 
Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the lever, which is the step closer to the handstand. So you wanna bend all the way over and touch the ground. So one of the drills that I like to do for levers is I coach beam. I like to stack foam onto the beam and have you guys unstack the foam. So you wanna start in your lunge, you wanna reach up nice and tall, and so these are my foam cubes for now. And I'm gonna reach down, pick one up, and then reach down and pick the other up, but I don't want my back leg on the floor while I'm reaching. So you wanna look like a teeter-totter. So you're gonna go down, you're gonna grab it, and back, I'm gonna set that back down, go a little further back over, and lever all the way down, grab, oh, I almost fell, and back. You know why I almost fell, guys? My toes turned in. Like I talked about earlier, turn those toes out. Okay, so the next step, I'm gonna turn this so I can show you a safe way to start working on my handstand. So I can fit it in my living room. If you wanna be against a couch or a bed or a big old wall, if you've got an open wall that you're not gonna kick anything off of, okay? If you've got hardwood floors, please don't wear them on your head. So what we're gonna do is that we're half handstand. So we're gonna use the couch to put our knees on it because since we need a handstand, we wanna do the half of it first so we get good at it. So you want something up high, probably up something more like the side of my couch would be better for me. But you wanna be like this and lift one foot and back down. Lift the other foot and back down. All right, guys, you don't wanna fall on your face. Don't lean too far forward so that your shoulders come up too much because that's not really fun for your chin. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is actually kick up to a handstand. So don't worry about kicking all the way up to vertical and holding it for an hour. Just kick up, get your feet together, and land back in your lunge. So I'm gonna start in my lunge. I'm gonna have my arms up. Ready, here's my T. Here's my lever. And there's my handstand. All right, one more time. So start in your lunge, arms by your ears. Here's your T. Here's your lever, and there's your handstand. Guys, you notice I'm not kicking all the way up so I don't fall over onto the couch because we wanna to learn to control the handstands, okay? All right, next thing is our car wheels. So I'm gonna turn my mat over. Do you guys need to pause and set up? Well, you can always do that. My hair's kind of a hot mess right now. So we are going to work on regular cartwheels, so sideways cartwheels, and then cartwheel to a lunge. So remember our sideways cartwheel, we face one way, we cartwheel, we land facing that way. So I'm gonna come over here because I'm a righty, and then I'm gonna cartwheel and land facing you just like I am now. So one hand, other hand, foot, foot. Now, if that's too tough, remember we can always do some cartwheel drills. So if you're doing a side cartwheel drill, you're gonna have something over here, and you're gonna put your hands on it, and then just jump your feet over. So I'm gonna go this way so you guys can not get such a nice view of my bottom. No, we're gonna reach over, and you're gonna jump your feet around the side. So hands on the surface, jump. All right, don't worry about the legs, that comes later. So then, as you get better at it, you wanna land on one foot. So hands, one foot, other foot. And did you see my legs got straighter that time? So that ideally when we get this, we get to cartwheel right over the top of it. So right up and over, okay? So moving on from that, so remember if you need to modify, always modify. We're gonna do lunge cartwheel. So you start in a lunge, your good leg lunge, and you land in your bad leg lunge. So it looks like this, I'm facing this way, and I'm gonna land facing that way. All right, Ooh, I almost fell out of that one. So one more time, good legs in the front, arms are by my ears, and finish. Okay guys, the next thing is a round off. I am only gonna demonstrate one because I have downstairs neighbors, but I definitely invite you guys to find a safe spot, like maybe your yard in the grass and it's a little squishier, or on a mat if you've got a mat. So somewhere that you're not gonna hurt yourself, so maybe not on your hard floors, and try a couple of round offs. So remember our feet come together at the top and they come down together when they land. So it's a fast cartwheel. 
You want to step, hurdle, round off. Tried to make that as quiet as I could. Remember that jump that I just said, the step hurdle? That's just where you step with your back foot, your good foot comes up, you bring your arms up with it, and you hop. So you're gonna step, hop. All right, try it one more time with me. Step, hop. And then that foot that's up, since that's your good foot, you're gonna step forward with it. And there's your lunge that starts your cartwheel. So step on your bad foot, hop. There's your lunge. And then do your round off. All right, nice job on that, guys. Next part of the routine is a candlestick. So we're gonna, we did that in warm up actually, but we go all the way backwards. And then we land in our pike with our arms and crown, like I'm wearing a crown, see? All right, one more time, we're gonna go all the way back. Candlestick, arms and crown. Then you're gonna lay on your back and you're gonna push up to a bridge. So I think you guys remember how to do that from warm up, right? So we're gonna push up nice and tall. And then you're gonna come back down. And that's the end of the girls class review for the routine. So now that we have worked on all of the skills in our routine, let's try to put the first part of the routine together. Don't worry if you can't remember it, we can go over it next week and the week after and the week after. And then when I finally get to see you guys all in person, we'll go over it again. So the first part of the routine is a step kick handstand. So if handstands are too hard, do either that T drill or the lever that we worked on. So you wanna step on your back foot, kick your good foot, and a baby handstand is totally okay, so only go up a little. So up, see I didn't go all the way, I control, I almost fell over there though. Try to control it in the handstand. So the next skill, and we wouldn't step back, we would keep going, but I have limited floor space. We're gonna do our round off. So I'm gonna do a cartwheel. If you think round offs are hard, you do a cartwheel too. So we start in our lunge and we cartwheel. Round off, if you do it, you should rebound that nice little jump that we do afterwards. All right, so I'm gonna move up, even though we wouldn't do that. We're gonna do our backwards roll. So we land facing the opposite way than we started after that cartwheel or that round off. So we're gonna roll backwards and stand. If the backwards roll is too hard, you would land, turn, and do a forward roll, okay? So the next part after our backwards or our forward roll then we'll do our candlestick. So go all the way up, just like in the mosque. And then we're gonna sit in a pipe with our arms in crown. So we look like we're wearing a crown. Then the last part is lay on your back. And we're gonna push up to our bridge and count to three. So ready? One, two, three. And come on back down. All right, guys, not too bad. Nice job with floor today. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna get set up for our next event. Hi again, beam queens. I pulled my beam out here and I've got it on my panel mat so you can't laugh at me if it's unstable. It's a foam beam and a squishy mat. But we're gonna try to learn a couple new things on beam, but a lot of it's gonna be reviewed too because we've done a lot of this. So when we start off on beam, we wanna do our warm up. So if you don't have a beam like I do, you can put a line on your floor. If you can't put a line on your floor, your parents say, don't put tape on my floor. That's fine. You can even imagine a line. Just remember, you wanna keep everything straight. So we never would face sideways on the beam like this. So keep in mind that you would go forward. If you've got a tree down in the backyard that's safe to walk on, you can pretend that's your beam. I don't really care, but please don't hurt yourselves. Okay, guys? All right, now what we're gonna do is work on our walk. So remember, we're just gonna keep our hands right down by our sides and just walk forward. Forward here and keeping everything straight. Don't walk off the end of your beam. So remember, you want to turn your pinky toes out and you're just walking down the beam. All right, after forward, we go backwards. So we're going to try to step back with our arms down or you can put them out for this. Okay, so just try to keep everything right over top of the beam. Okay, now we're going to go sideways. So this is when we do want to face sideways. I like to walk on my tippy toes, so I think this is a little bit easier on your tippy toes, but if you got some little teeny weeny tiny feet, go ahead and just walk sideways with your arms out to the side. Step together, step together, step together, step together, come on again. And then let's go back the other way. Step together, step together, 
and step together. All right, if you guys don't feel like that's enough for your warm up, like you wanna walk across the whole beam, pause the video and keep going, then pop back in when you're ready. All right, now we're gonna do our kicks. So we're gonna put our hands on our shoulders, we roll our shoulders back and straighten out our elbows. And we're just gonna do some kicks. We don't wanna bend our knees, just like we did in warm ups. And then we're gonna try some arabesque kicks, so the ones that go behind us. So we're gonna keep those arms right out. We don't wanna have lazy noodle arms all the way up. Kick behind, step, kick behind, step, kick behind, step. Okay, next part of the warm up is gonna be passe step. So we're gonna keep our hands on our hips and we're gonna bring our toe up to our knees so we look like the letter P. Like kind of that way for you guys. So you're gonna walk and just lift your foot up. So don't rest your foot on your knee, just bring it up. One, two, remember this is passe. Good job, guys. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to work on is bunny hops. We're going to keep our hands either down by our sides, we're going to keep them on our hips, and we're just going to do little hops on the beam. So nothing crazy, you don't want to go up super high, so just little baby bunny hops. Oh, I tried to fall. All right, then we're going to do jump sticks. So we're going to put one foot in front, we're going to swing our arms just a little, jump, and land. I don't want you guys going like this. If it's easier to just keep your hands on your hips, jump, stick. Maybe do that. I kind of like that a little bit better myself. All right. So that is our warm up. If you want to keep going through and doing that, I know it's kind of a quick one when the beam's six feet long. But I'm going to move on to teaching you guys different skills that are in the level two and level three routines. So the first thing that we're going to talk about today is our arabesque, right? So that's when we lift our foot behind us. So when we're doing an arabesque, you don't want to lift your foot all the way up back here because that's a different move that's not an arabesque. We're going to talk about that too. So let's try an arabesque. We're going to stand on one foot, probably your good foot, and you're going to lift the other foot behind you and we're going to try to count to three. So we're doing one gymnastics, two gymnastics, three gymnastics. And now try it on the other foot. So right here, lift it, one gymnastics, two gymnastics, three gymnastics, and back down. Notice this leg is nice and straight. I'm not trying to balance with my leg all the way out to the side. Everything needs to stay over the balance beam. Okay, so the next thing is a little bit harder than an arabesque. So if you struggle with the arabesque, keep working on that. If that seems a little too easy, we're going to try a scale. So if this is our arabesque, this is our scale. It's up a little bit higher. All right, so let's try three seconds but we'll hold the arabesque too. So ready, one, two, and then scale. One, two, three, and down. Let's try it on the other side, that's a little tougher. So lift your foot, arabesque, one, two, scale, one, two, three, and down. Notice I'm not letting my chest drop. Look what happens if I try to do that. If I lift and then drop my chest, where'd I go? Off the beam, right onto the floor, face first. So keep everything straight. If your arabesque is just a little wobbly thing, don't try the scale, it's a little bit harder, okay guys? All right, so the next thing that we're gonna work on is a kick to a lock position. So when we do our kicks, we just bring our foot down, right? Remember, relevé lock is this. So when we're doing kicks in level two, we wanna kick, bring our feet back together, and then we do another kick. So we're going to kick back to a lock. You don't have to do a releve lock. You can kick, bring your foot right back. Try it on the other leg. So kick right back. So my feet aren't a mile apart. They're coming right back. So if we're doing it on our tippy toes, we're going up. Oh, let me get my balance here. Kick down and then kick down. Okay. It's a little bit harder, but if you work on that, your legs will get stronger and your pivot turns will get easier. So try to work on a few locks in the middle too. All right, speaking of pivot turns, here's our lock position. Releve means stand on your tippy toes, right? So stand all the way up on your tippy toes, bring your legs close together, and we're gonna do our pivot turn. Let's see if we can do it with socks on this beam. Well, that wasn't so bad. And then we can try to pivot back the other way. Now remember, if you pivot the wrong way, your legs are gonna cross and you're gonna fall off the beam. So make sure that you've got Whichever foot is in the back, that's the way you're trying to turn, okay? 
So this next thing should sound really familiar because we just did it on floor. We're gonna work on our T drills, but those are kind of hard on a beam. So one of the things that you can do is I'm gonna turn my mat and I'm gonna reach over and tap the end of my beam. So I would put a mat at the end of the beam for my girls that are learning how to do levers and T drills. And they're just gonna bend over, they're gonna tap, and their back foot's gonna come up and land back in their lunge. So bend, tap, lunge. I guess bend isn't the right idea because you don't wanna bend, you wanna be nice and straight. So here, T, lunge. All right, so if the lever or the T drill, more like it's gonna be too tough, go against a hitch. If not, go ahead, try to hold it, and then back down. Then you can go ahead and try your lever. So that's when we bend over and we touch the beam. So we go from here, there's your T, do a touch, and land back on the beam. I tried to fall, that was a freaking wobble save right there. Well, you guys get the idea, right? So the last thing we're gonna talk about on beam, I think we might have talked about last time too. And that's gonna be your dismount drill. So we're gonna kick up to our side handstand. I'm gonna use my couch as a brace so I don't fall. If you guys don't have somewhere safe to do it in the middle of an open area, that's fine. You don't have to do this. If you have a wall that you can do it against and nothing that you're gonna crash into, that works too. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do like a cartwheel but stop in the middle and then bring our feet down. So we're gonna kick up. Whoop, and come on down. I tried to fall onto my couch. Up. And bring your feet down and finish okay so it's like the handstand where we control our legs and we bring them down safely to the floor nice job guys so i really hope you enjoyed my class i hope you learned some new stuff i hope you got some good practice drills to work on so when i see you all you've got these skills down perfect but if not don't worry i won't be mad i'll just be happy to see you so Hope you guys all stay safe. Hope you and your families are happy and healthy. And hopefully I will see you all soon. And I'll be here next week for your video.